Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong, and welcome to Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> Jamie and Steve, welcome back. You were on the show last time. We gave everyone two chances to reach the final, and today is your last chance. Remind us how you two know each other. I'm Steve's son. No, known him for 20 years. Known him all your life? <laughs> yep. Excellent. How did you do last time? Got to the head to the head, but unfortunately the questions didn't quite fall right for us. Well, I hope they fall better for you today. Zach and Ozzy, welcome back to you. You were also on the show last time. Can you remind us how you two know each other? We met at university and we've been friends ever since. Excellent. How did you do last time? Uh, we went out first round because I know nothing of Robbie Williams. You know nothing of Robbie Williams? <laughs> yes. Is that something you're going to rectify or are you happy with the way things are? <laughs> I'm Comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. And welcome to Sarah and Caroline. How do you two know each other? I'm a novelist, and when I'm not writing books, I teach creative writing, and I taught Caroline on a course of how to write a novel. Is there a novel in you, Caroline? I have written the novel. You've written a novel? I have. You've done it? Yeah. Was it a long novel? 222 and a half pages. Very good. No. With pictures, large type. <laughs> yeah, no. well done. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Brilliant. You haven't done your second I have started on the second novel, yeah. Oh, very well, that's good. The all-important second novel. The tricky <laughs> second novel, they sometimes say. Well, very best of luck this afternoon. I hope you do very well. And finally, we've got Brian and Jane. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? Thank you. Well, this is my dear old dad. Yeah, less of the old. <laughs> <laughs> Come now. Well, less of the old. Splendid. Well, it's lovely to have you on the show. We'll get to know you all more throughout the show, but meanwhile, it's time for me to introduce my pointless friend, the man with all the facts and figures, Richard. <laughs> So, Richard, what sort of a show have you lined up for us? A great one. We've got a, a couple of very tricky questions, I think, to, to start off with. We've got two returning pairs. Jamie and Steve went very, very close last time. I think they'll want to go all the way. Uh, Zach and Ozzy, come on, you can do it, guys. <laughs> and two new pairs, both of whom I think are very strong. I think, just going on a hunch... Go on. ...my prediction for today's show, Sarah and Caroline oh. are, are going, going victorious. all the way. Yeah. <laughs> and I've been right once this series, so <laughs> there's, there's always a second time. Good luck. Exactly. Yes, good luck. We've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. To stay in the game, all our players need to do is to score as few points as they possibly can. They do that by coming up with those obscure answers that as few of those 100 people gave as possible. The thing everyone's looking to do, of course, is to find a Pointless answer that none of our 100 people gave. Each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Stephanie and Trevor won the jackpot last time, so today's jackpot starts off at £1,000. <laughs> that it is. OK, let's play Pointless. In the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. Whichever team has the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated and you have to be very careful because if anyone gives me an incorrect answer, then this will happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, guys, your first category is... Universities. Can you decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And having decided, can the first players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, let's find out what our first question is going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many top universities in the UK and Ireland as they could. Richard, top universities. Yeah, a tough one, this. There are 20 universities in the UK and Ireland that feature in the world's top 100 universities. That's according to the Times Education World University rankings. Can you find the most obscure one possible? Ooh, right. Jamie and Steve, you all drew lots before the show, and today you get to go first. Jamie. Ah. Having never been to university, I've already started to fall down, but I'll go for my hometown, Nottingham University. You're going to go for Nottingham? Yes. OK, we are looking for top universities in the UK and Ireland. Let's hope it's not an incorrect answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Nottingham. It is correct. Good. That's a good answer. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Jamie, you do this every time. You say, oh, I don't know, I've no idea, I'm oh, completely in the dark, and then you pull something out of the bag and you score a nice low score like 11. That's brilliant. Nottingham. Yeah, uh, University of Nottingham, according to the rankings, is the 91st best university in the world. It's built on land donated by Boots the Chemist. So if you go, take a loyalty card. <laughs> Good answer, Jamie. Ozzy. <laughs> what are your hobbies, Ozzy? Acting, skateboarding, writing. Oh, and university, I guess. You, know, for the past you went to university. I'm still there, yeah. You're still, of course you are, you're still yeah. there. I'm going to say 
UCL. University UCL, College UCL. University College London. That's a good answer, I think. Let's see how many people said UCL. It's correct. Very good answer. Down it goes. Oh, very good. Look at that. Well done, Ozzy. UCL scores you seven. Richard, UCL. Yeah, UCL. I've only got seven points, but it's, it's ranked fourth. It's the fourth best university in the world. It has alumni including Ricky Gervais and Alexander Graham Bell. Good answer. Sarah, do you have a good idea of what universities might fall within this category? I teach at a university, um, so I have a good idea of which ones are correct, but which ones are pointless is quite mm. another matter. You've got to go down into the... Well, I'm going to slightly... Well, not play safe. Um, my son is at King's College London, and I'm pretty certain that's in the... will be a correct answer. And you it might be, particularly with UCL coming so low, I think that's quite... You I think hope. KCL is going to come down <laughs> lower than seven. OK, well, let's see. How many people said King's College London? Well, it's correct. Beats Nottingham. Oh, it doesn't quite beat UCL. That scores you eight. KCL, Richard. Yeah, King's College London is the, the 23rd best university in the world. And Desmond Tutu studied there. And finally, Brian. We are looking for top universities in the UK and Ireland. Coming from Wales, I think I, I've got to throw a Welsh one in. I think it's anyway. Uh, you know, it may be very, very obscure, but I'll try Aberystwyth. Aberystwyth. Got to hope Aberystwyth is a correct answer. And if it is a correct answer, I'd like to think that was going to go a long way down. And let's see how many people said Aberystwyth. Oh, no! Well, laudable national loyalty there. I'm afraid, though, Aberystwyth is an incorrect answer, so I'm afraid that means you score the maximum of 100 points. Aberystwyth, Richard? Yeah, I'm afraid not. It's a lovely place, but not, not in the world's top 100 universities. OK, well, we are halfway through the round. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. Well, as ever, it's a pretty wide-ranging scoreboard. Zach and Ozzy looking fantastic there. Nice low score of seven. Brian and Jane, I'm afraid, very exposed way out ahead there with 100. It was a, it was a reasonable punt to take. OK, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we're looking for top universities in the UK and Ireland. Jane, I'm afraid you are the top scorers by a margin. Yes. You're going to have to find a pointless answer here, I think. Have you got any ideas? Well, I've got a few, but none that I could think would possibly be anywhere near a pointless answer. What do you do, Jane? I'm an acting head teacher. An acting head mm. teacher? I'm playing at it at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to say? Well, I'm going to go for a university that I, I think is in the top 100, but... Warwick. Warwick. OK, this has to be a very low score for you. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Warwick. Good. Oh, it's eight. <laughs> Warwick scores you eight. A nice low score, but I'm afraid your total is 108. Very good answer. You need a low score there. You've got one. Warwick is the, it's the 58th best university in the world, according to the Times Higher Education Supplement. Marvellous. Thank you. Caroline, do you feel comfortable with this? I think so. I'm, I'm toying between the one that I went to mm -hmm. and the one that is near to me, both of which were very good. And I think think people would be surprised with both of them so I'm just toying with the idea and I think I'm going to go with Bath. You're going to go with Bath? Bath. That is where you live? That's where I live. Where you live. Most beautiful city. It is the most beautiful city. There's the red line. You see it's just below the pink line. If you come below that red line you're definitely in the next round. So let's see if it's a correct answer and if it is let's see how far down it goes. How many people said it? Oh, no! Sorry. No! <laughs> Disaster. The injustice of it. I can't believe That's it. That's so wrong. Bath, a wrong answer. That scores you the maximum of 100 points. 
Well, I'm, I'm gobsmacked. Richard, Richard, explain yourself. What's going on? Well, as I say, you know, I, I wasn't involved in putting the list together. <laughs> if I had been, it would, be, it would be right up there. I'm afraid it's not in the top 100. Well, this is very exciting. We have two, two teams neck and neck as high scorers at the moment on 108, Caroline and Sarah and Jane and Brian. Zach and Ozzy, you can't lose. You can't no. lose. What a nice position to be no. in. They haven't even answered, and they are definitely through to the next round. So what are you going to say? I'm thinking, do I go for the uni that rejected me? <laughs> <laughs> or don't, tough, you know, tough. Don't life, you know. flatter them. Or do I go for one that could be so obscure that it's not even in the list? Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's, a, that's you a dilemma. Know, I think I'm going to go for the one that rejected me, and I know they're a good school, but if they're not in this list, I'm going to give them a call and say, I don't see why you rejected me, because you know you're going to talk about So I've got pretty good grades, but um, I'm going to go with Loughborough University. Loughborough? Yeah. Very good. Sporting University. Let's see how many people said Loughborough. No! You get on the phone to them, Zach. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's an incorrect answer. That scores you the maximum of 100 points, taking your total up to a safe 107. Richard, Loughborough. Yeah, sorry about that. I think it's a direct response to, to not having you there. <laughs> <laughs> they plummeted like a stone. <laughs> uh, no, Loughborough. Win -win. Loughborough and Bath, of course, both very, very famous sporting Massive universities. Sp rugby uh, universities, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. OK, Steve. Steve, the high scorers on 108. You're not safe. You have to score 96 or less with this. What do you do, Steve? I'm a quantity surveyor. I just would love to know what that meant. Quantity surveying, can you tell me briefly what that, what that involves? Basically, it's the financial management of building projects. Right. From tender stage right through to final account. Oh, I see. Now, that begins to make some sense. We are looking for top universities in the UK and Ireland. Much as I would love to go for a pointless... Yeah. Huh? I think it's play safe time, mm -hmm. uh, because I can actually lose us this with a, an incorrect answer. OK. So I'm going to go with the old joke, uh, the old Durham, Durham. You're going to go for Durham? Yeah. There's your red line. Below that red line, you're through to the next round, and we have an interesting tie break on our hands. Let's see how many people said Durham. No! What about that? Sarah is in shock. I'm not sure I'm not in shock either. Durham scores you 100, taking your score up to 111. This is not going to make you feel any better. Uh, it, it was, it was, uh, it was 103rd oh, on the list, beaten by Manchester, St Andrews, Leeds, Bristol, York, Birmingham, LSE, Glasgow, Trinity, Dublin, Imperial, and a few more. We'll, we'll have a look at in a moment. Well, that is the end of round one, and the losing pair with the highest score, I'm afraid, is Jamie and Steve. Well, you, could, you, you thought you were playing safe. I thought you were playing fantastically safe. <laughs> yeah. Dear, oh, I, I dear. expected to score 60 or 70. Dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. You could have gone maybe from some others nearer you, nearer home. Jamie, a bit surprised by that? Yeah, yeah, I was. I thought there was a few more obvious answers, but... <laughs> <laughs> he, he says quite markedly. <laughs> um, oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, I, I, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm Completely knocked sideways by that. Durham, it's an academic place, nice collegiate university. You know, you, you're going to have it, to get over it. What? <laughs> what? I don't think I will. <laughs> <laughs> what answers should they have given? Richard? I think Jamie's got a long car road home with his dad, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, th there, there were no pointless answers at all, actually. At least, at least one person of our 100 said all of these. Let's take a look at the, the three best answers you could have given. University College Dublin, that's the 89th best university in the world. University of Southampton, 95th. Uh, university of Sheffield, uh, if you've got any of those, are very, very good answers. Let's have a look at the, the most obvious answers. That's according to the Times Education World University rankings. Third, it was Edinburgh. Edinburgh is the 20th best university in the world. And second, it was Cambridge, uh, which is the second best university in the world, behind Harvard. Oh, I see. Oh, good, good. <laughs> the one that most people said it's the fifth best university in the world it was Oxford. I would have got through with them. Yeah. Yep, both of those, you'd, you'd have got through with those as well. Oxford fifth. <laughs> yeah. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Are you any happier now, Steve? No, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> oh, I dear, I could have said oh, Oxford or Cambridge. I know, you could have done, you'd have been fine. Uh, thanks very much, Richard. Jamie and Steve, I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless university knowledge you needed to make it through to the finals. So we have to say goodbye to you, but you've been fantastic contestants. Thanks so much for playing Pointless, thank you. <laughs>
But for the remaining three pairs, it's time for round two. Now, obviously, only two pairs make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so one of our teams is going to be leaving disappointed at the end of this round. You just have to make sure it's not you. OK, our category for the second round is... Animals. <laughs> animals. <laughs> Are you pleased with that, Sarah, or just is that just disbelief? I can't believe it's the one thing I said I didn't want to have. An no, animal it could be up. any sort of question at all. I mean, it could be anything. Are you worried that we're not being more specific on our general <laughs> categories? <laughs> Would you like to lodge a complaint? <laughs> I, can, I can pass it on. You know. No, animals will do It'll nicely. It'll do. OK. Mm. And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. <laughs> OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many breeds of dog as they could. Breeds of dog. Caroline's thrilled about that. Richard, breeds of dog. Yeah, the correct answers here are all pedigree breeds of dog as recognised by the UK Kennel Club. In round two, we're going to give you a choice of seven possible answers in each pass. And I can tell you that at least one of those answers is pointless. But you have to be very careful because there's also at least one incorrect answer among the seven. Pick one of those and you will score the maximum of 100 points. This is your first set of seven answers. Ibo, Tonkinese, Dalmatian, Maltese, Chihuahua, Labrador, Pekingese. Zach, yes. thrilled with that. Very good. Do you know anything about dogs? I know they bite. <laughs> <laughs> anything biting you from that? <laughs> I would like to say a couple of those, but I'm not sure whether they're just fancy names for a dog or an actual breed. I, I don't know, I just feel like you guys are trying to lead me to a trick question here or something. <laughs> I, we wouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm going to go for Chihuahua. Chihuahua. Yeah. You're going to go with Chihuahua. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Chihuahua. <laughs> Not a bad score. Not a bad score. Chihuahua gets you 18. Richard Chihuahua. Yeah, Chihuahua, they take their name from there. The Mexican state of Chihuahua is the smallest breed of dog in the world. Now, remember, there is at least one pointless answer in there, but there is also at least one incorrect answer. So, Caroline, do you know about dogs? I don't, but I've got some comfort in that Sarah definitely does. Oh, she's that's a, good. She's a dog lover. But does that mean if you make her, if you really, Message if you say so, yeah, she, you, might, yeah. you might suddenly feel it in your heels. Mm. Right, OK, we're looking for a breed of dog. Right, I'm going to be brave and not go for the obvious ones. I'm Good. going to go for... I know you can have a Maltese Terrier. They're the silly little ones where people tie them up in little bows on the top, and I've seen them on Crufts. I'm going to go Maltese. You're going to go Maltese. You're getting a nod from behind you. That's Ooh. good. That's got to be good news. <laughs> OK, let's see how many people said Maltese. That's correct. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. That's £250 to today's jackpot. That takes the total up to £1,250. Well done, Caroline. You score nothing. That's what you want. Richard? Very good answer. Uh, the Maltese is pure white with a soft, silky coat. Is it? Yeah, it is, yeah. That sounds lovely. Now, remember, there could be one more pointless answer in there. And there's most definitely at least one incorrect one there. Brian, we're looking for breeds of dog. Yeah. Are, are you at home with dogs? I'm at home with dogs. That's good. Yep. That's good. Are these breeds that you've heard of? I've heard of some of them, and I'm going to play safe this round. No, I'm going to go for uh, Pekingese. 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 OK. Let's see how many people said Pekingese. Well done, Brian. Pekingese scores you four. Pekingese. Yeah, Pekingese. I think that's, that's an amazingly low score, I think, for Pekingese. I would have thought they were Very low quite dog. well known. Uh, yeah, you're quite right. I'm not sure that's how we scored it. Uh, let's take a look at all of them and uh, see where the wrong answers were, see if there's any more pointlesses. Labrador, of course, we all know, uh, would have scored you 81 points, almost as bad as getting a wrong answer. Dalmatian would have scored you 27. If you said Tonkinese, sort of got 100 points. It's a, a breed of cat, the Tonkinese. And the Ibo is, uh, is Sony's robot dog. Would also have got you uh, 100 points because the UK Kennel Club are still not recognising it. <laughs>
OK, well, we're halfway through the round, so let's take a look at the scores. Sarah and Caroline, fantastic low score there. A pointless answer, score of nothing. Brian and Jane can be feeling quite pleased themselves. Four. So, uh, Ozzy, the pressure's going to be on you on the next pass to think of something really obscure. OK, we're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, we are looking for breeds of dog, and we're going to put seven more answers up on the board. Here they are. Papillon, Briard, Linnet, German Shepherd, Shih Tzu, Beagle, Otterhound. And again, I can tell you that there is at least one pointless answer in there. There's also at least one incorrect answer amongst them, so do try and avoid those. Jane, do you know your dogs? Well, I know some dogs, mm. but the question is, do you play safe or do I go for the one that I think is a dog, but it may turn out not to be a dog at all? <laughs> well, the high score is 18, which isn't that high. No. So you can't afford to play too safe here. I think... A papillon is a dog. A papillon. Let's see if it is a correct answer. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said papillon. It's a correct answer. Down it goes. You're through. <laughs> so that's pointless. It adds another £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total to £1,000. £500. Congratulations. <laughs> that scores you nothing. Your total is four. Richard, Papillon. Yeah, the Papillon, uh, another name, and I think the better name, for the Continental Toy Spaniel. OK, we are looking for breeds of dog. You have a pointless answer. You, you're currently on nothing. Do you think there's another pointless on there that could easily be? I think there is. Brilliant. I Chance hope there for you to is, score otherwise I'm going a to double look very pointless. Stupid. Well, it's your it's your pet subject. Forgive the pun. Right, you have to score 17 or less with your answer. What are you going to say, Sarah? I'm not sure whether I should risk the pointless one. Yes, go um, on. I know which is the wrong one, I think. Um, but I'm going to. Oh, all right, I'll do it. I'll go for the Briard, which I believe is a beautiful shaggy hairy dog. Quite a big one. A Briard. You're hoping it's a beautiful, hairy, shaggy dog. You have to score 17 or less to be certain of a place in the next round. There's your red line below that red line, and you are sailing through. Let's put it to the test. Let's see how many people said Briard. It's correct. I think this is going to go quite a long way down. That's another pointless answer, and it also adds £250 to today's jackpot, taking the total up to £1,750. <laughs> Congratulations, a double pointless in one round. A double O. Confirmed. We're pointless women. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Well, in this show, that's exactly what we want. That's the way to play the game. It's a, it's a long-haired guard dog. So if you write beware of the Briard on your gate, no one's going to know what you're talking about. <laughs> Ozzy and Zach. The other two pairs have scored so low that you were already, even before you've given this answer, the eliminated pair. However, there may very well be another pointless answer on the board. And you could do a very good, noble thing <laughs> by leaving, bequeathing an extra 250 quid to the remaining pairs. Why not have a crack at it? OK, I was looking, and to be honest, the only ones that really stood out to me were um, German Shepherd, Shih Tzu and Beagle. Mm -hmm. And Shih Tzu kept talking to me. So I thought, mm. talk back if I got the chance, but no, nope. they got the pointless answers. So I'm gonna go with Shih Tzu. If that's a food or a dog, I'm not quite sure. But <laughs> Shih Tzu's my answer. Doesn't sound especially appetizing. But there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what that gets you. Well, it's correct. would have been a good answer. 20. <laughs> that takes your total up to 38. Richard, Shih Tzu. Yeah, every, every schoolboy's favourite dog, the Shih Tzu. Uh, it actually means lion. It was, the, it was the house pet of the Ming Dynasty. Let's take a look at the rest of the answers. We've had two pointless, but there was actually another pointless up there as well. Ooh. It's obviously not German Shepherd. German Shepherd would have got you uh, a fairly hefty 67. Beagle would have scored you a, a surprisingly low seven. There's a wrong answer there, and there is a pointless answer there. Yeah, the wrong answer is a, is a 
A linnet's a bird. A linnet is a bird, yeah. It's also the name of one of the Queen's corgis, but would have scored you 100 points. And an otter hound was, yes, another pointless answer. That's a, that's a dog who can track an otter, either on land or water. Amazing. What a so skill. So if, 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 anyone's, if anyone's looking for something that can track an otter on land or water, I suggest an otter hound. <laughs> <laughs> So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score, I'm sorry to say, is Zach and Ozzy. Yeah. Oh, dear, guys, it was, that, was a, that was a tough round for you. Yeah. What would you have loved to have had come up in that round? Oh, don't get us started. Marvel characters, movies. Movies, any sports. of these things. Sports, and you got Shih Tzu instead. Yeah. I'm afraid you just didn't have that pointless dog knowledge you needed to get through to the next round, so we have to say goodbye. But you've been fantastic, contestants. Thanks very much for playing Pointless. Thank you. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, things are about to get even more exciting now as we enter the head-to-head. -head. <laughs> so well done, Sarah, Caroline, Brian and Jane. You've made it through to the head-to-head. -head. Now, obviously, only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for the jackpot, which, in case you'd forgotten, currently stands at £1,750. <laughs> Now, you're going to go head-to-head -head on up to five questions. For each question, each pair needs to give me just one answer. Now, you are allowed to confer. All you have to do is come up with an answer that scores less than the other pair to win that question. And the first pair to win three will be playing for today's jackpot. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> right, here's your first question. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Canary Islands as they could. Richard, Canary Islands. Uh, yeah, we're looking for any of the seven permanently inhabited Canary Islands. And while they're conferring, see if, uh, if anyone can get all seven at home. OK, Sarah and Caroline, because you've played best throughout the show, you get to go first. I don't know if it's the only one. I don't think it's one Brian and Jane, of course, you can confer as well. Don't, uh... Oh, no, they've turned. They have an answer. Caroline. We're not sure if we've made this up or not. Yeah. She's made it. <laughs> We're going for Porto Ventura. Porto Ventura. Or Fuenchura. Porto <laughs> Fuenchura. Yeah. Okay. Oops, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Porto Fuenchura from Sarah and Caroline. Mm. Brian and Jane. What is it by strength? I know, but. Have you been to the Canary Islands? Uh, about 20 times, yeah. <gasps> oh, no. I know La Gomera. Oh. Do you want to go La with that one or do you want to? Because La I Palma. think. That is Fortaventura. It is Fortaventura. Yeah, not yeah. Portaventura. No, no, it's Fortaventura. So we could go for Tenerife. OK, what are you going to go for? Bagamera. OK, let's take them in the order they were given. Sarah and Caroline, Porta Ventura. Let's see how many of our 100 people said it <laughs> and if it exists. <laughs> no. No, I'm afraid, like we thought, just like the man said, that is an incorrect answer. Brian and Jane are going for La Gomera. Let's see how many of our 100 people said La Gomera. It's correct, which is all it needs to be. How far down will it go? Look at that. Wow, look at that. OK, so after our first question, it is 1-0 to Brian and Jane. Richard. Yeah, Brian, you kept an admirably good poker face when the Canary Islands came up for someone who's been there 20 times. We didn't see that smile then. No. Uh, Lagomera was a, a great answer. The only thing that would have beaten it was uh, El Hierro, oh, yeah. which is now a, a UNESCO biosphere zone. And it was its Fuerteventura rather than Portaventura. Just rub it in. It <laughs> you know what? It wouldn't have won anyway. Does that, does that help? Let's take a look okay. at all of them. There's the UNESCO biosphere zone, El Hierro at the bottom, Lagomera. We've had uh, La Palma, Fuerteventura, and the top three were Lanzarote, Gran Canaria and Tenerife. Time now for our second question. Let's hear what it is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many members of Queen as they could. We're looking for any of the four original members of Queen. That's the original members as they were when uh, they released their first album in 1973. Brian and Jane, your turn to go first this time. We can just answer. Just, you just answer. OK. I'll just answer. You go, come on. You, well, I tell you what, Jane, you I'm just answer. I'm not any help at all. No, OK, no, I'm no. spotting. I'm noticing this. You're doing this exactly. all on your own. I am. Why don't you just answer? So I think I will. <laughs> just, just so answer. So I think I'll go with John Deacon. Oh, I think that's a very good answer. Caroline and Sarah. Oh, dear Caroline, was that the one you had? Did you have that one? <laughs> did you have John Deacon lined up? No, but it sounds very good. I had it Oh, did you? Up. Yes. Oh. 
expecting Freddie may not get in here. Brian may. And the other one, what's his Roger. name? Roger. Roger somebody. Definitely not Roger Daltrey. What's his he name? He asked me out once. Did he? Mm. Who, Roger Daltrey? No. Roger, whatever his surname is. Oh, oh come on, you can't remember his name? <laughs> what if he's watching? <laughs> it was a long time ago. <laughs> We're going to blob with Brian May. Here we go with Brian May. Yeah. OK. Brian and Jane answered first with John Deacon. Oh, an expert knowledge of Queen, I suspect, there. John Deacon. Brian and Jane, let's see how many of our 100 people said John Deacon. Yeah. Yeah. 13. <laughs> and Sarah and Caroline, you said Brian May. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Brian May. Mm. 71. So, after our second question, it is 2-0 to Brian and Jane. John Deacon was the killer answer there. Well done, Helen. Yeah. Couldn't be beaten. Uh, the Roger you were thinking of was Roger Taylor. Let's take a look at all four of them. There it is, John Deacon, the youngest member. He was the bassist. Roger Taylor, the drummer. We've got 21. Brian May, 71. And, of course, Freddie Mercury, the most popular of all, uh, with 91 points. Well, we are now at 2-0, which means it's two break points, essentially, to Brian and Jane. You win any of the next two questions and you're straight through. But you might be straight through to the final with this question. Here is your third question. See if you can make it a clean sweep. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many gymnastic apparatus. How many pieces of gymnastic apparatus as they could? Richard. We're looking for any of the eight individual apparatus used in men's or women's Olympic artistic gymnastics. Uh, just so you know, we're not looking for any of the rhythmic gymnastics, the balls and the ribbons and so on. Just the eight individual apparatus used in men's and women's Olympic gymnastics. OK. Sarah and Caroline, it's your turn to go first. Have <laughs> you got any idea? Mm -hmm. Philly boots. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Yeah, it's real. Let's go for it. We need to go risky. Go for it. OK. Is this a confident answer or a bit of a, bit no. of a pun? I am not pronouncing this one. Why? <laughs> so I'll get it wrong. <laughs> Sarah, over to you. What's it going to be? We're going to go for the pommel horse. For the, pom the pommel horse. The pommel horse. P O M M E L. The pommel horse. Brian and Jane. Thank you. Well, you've got the rings. Yeah, asymmetric bars, mm. parallel bars. Ooh. I like the pommel horse as well, though. Yeah, we can't answer that. No, the rings? I think the asymmetric bars. Asymmetric bars. Asymmetric yes. bars. Yes. I think so. Well, yeah. yep. you, you know a lot about gymnastics. Oh, is that? Can you tell by looking? Well, at I'm just no. beginning to wonder. <laughs> Not at all. He's really? talking to me. Oh, sorry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go for the asymmetric bars. I think so. Yeah. Okay. So we have the pommel horse from Sarah and Caroline. That was the first answer given. Let's see how many of our 100 people said pommel horse. That's correct. 72. Wow. Wow, that's a, that's a popular horse, that one. <laughs> and Brian and Jane have said the asymmetric bars. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the asymmetric bars. Go, oh, it's done it! Wow. wow. Look at that, 11. <laughs> a good answer. So after only three questions, it's been a, a clean sweep for Brian and Jane, and they have won 3-0. Richard. Let's take a look at all the answers and we'll see uh, quite how badly Pommel Horse scored. There's the asymmetric <laughs> bars, the best answer you could have got. Then the high bar, vault, balance beam, we've got you 38. And these are the top four, parallel bars, mat, then the rings, and then our old friend, the Pommel Horse, with the uh, 72 points. Uh, but oh, we'll see you next time. I've never heard of it. Well, you have now. <laughs> <laughs> Engraved on her heart. OK, thanks, Richard. So the losing pair at the end of the head-to-head, -head, I'm afraid, is Sarah and Caroline. You just didn't know gymnastics apparatus, did you? Well, it wasn't a girly question, was it? To be honest, I, I wasn't that sure. I thought pommel horse sounded, sounded really good. Yeah, thank I thought you. That was... I thought it sounded good. I was yeah. impressed. I'd have, I'd have just said horse, which would have, which would have scored me 100. So, um, so there you go. <laughs> Sarah and Caroline, you have come so close to make it all the way to the head-to-head, -head, but I'm afraid you've wasted one of your chances to get through to our final, but we will see you again next time, when I hope you do even better. Thanks so much for playing. You've been great contestants. Thank you. <laughs> 
But for Brian and Jane, it's time for our pointless final. Congratulations, Brian and Jane. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. But now you've got a chance to win our pointless jackpot, which at the end of today's show stands at an impressive £1,750. Very good. <laughs> OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer. That's an answer that no one could think of. We've had three pointless answers on the show today, and Jane, you gave us one of those, so let's just hope you can find one more of those now. First, though, you've got to choose a category, and here are your three options. You can go for goal scorers, 90s boy bands or classic British sitcoms? Well, I think we can leave 90s boy bands right yeah, out of the equation. And um, I don't know, gold scorers, we may be yeah. all right with that, but yeah. I. Yeah. Really? Yeah, we'd be fine with that. But I think, do you I think, think? I think. Classic, classic British, classic British sitcoms. sitcoms. That's I think what we'll, you're going to yeah, go for. I think for. we'll go for those. Okay, we'll try good that one. <coughs> unanimous decision there. So what would you mm -hmm. like it to be? Classic British sitcoms. What do you think that might be? Well, sort of. Dad's Army. Yes. Mm. Um, open all hours. That's yeah, sort of thing you'd love. You'd be very happy. Yes, with something like yes. That. Dad's Army, open all hours. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's find yeah. out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many staff members from Are You Being Served as they could. Well, you don't look too scared by that. Richard? Well. Yeah, we're looking for the names of any member of staff at Grace Brothers Department Store in uh, Are You Being Served. They have to have appeared in at least 10 episodes of Are You Being Served. Uh, just so you know, we're not looking for the Grace Brothers themselves, just anybody who worked in the store, any named character. OK, you now have up to one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that £1,750 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. OK, your 60 seconds start now. I think we can, I think we can, I think we can find them, but what, which ones are the pointless ones or not? So I'm thinking maybe young Mr Grace might be... Yeah, might well, be, a, yeah. Miss Brahms, Miss Captain Peacock. No, they're not. So, so what's a pointless one then? When you think of no, not really. No, so, so really. Um, let's see. Miss Brahms, Captain Peacock, Mr Humphreys, um, Mr Lucas. Yeah, I think no, we may count. Really I'm really thinking we may count him. Uh, young Mr Grace. Um, well, I can't remember the guy that used to work. Oh, on the shop floor, he was played by Alfie Bass. But I can't remember what 20 seconds left. What was the Arthur English character? Oh, it, perhaps it was Arthur English, yeah. was it? Not Arthur Bass? What was his character? What was his character? Uh, you had a brown coat that yeah, did yeah. all the... Can't think of it. No, so no. I think, yeah. Should we go with go the ones we've said? Yeah, go with those three. You've thought of your yeah. three. OK, yeah, we're going to stop so. the clock with three seconds remaining. What are your three going to be? So we'll go with um, Mr Humphreys. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Mrs... Slocum, no? The other two you said, that would be Grace Brothers. Go on, yeah, go on. Mrs Slocum <coughs> and Mr Lucas. Which of those do you think is the one you have most confidence in? Mr Lucas, Mr. Lucas is the Lucas, one okay, that we'll I'd put him third. Yeah. And which one you have least confidence um, in being a pointless answer? Mr Humphreys. Mr Humphreys. Mr. Humphreys. Okay, well, let's put those up on the board in that order. Mr Humphreys, Mr Slocum and... Lastly, Mr. Lucas. OK, you now have three shots at winning the jackpot of £1,750. All you need to win it is for one of those answers to be a pointless answer, an answer which none of our 100 people said. OK, so let's put your first one up to the test. This was the one that you had least faith in. Mr. Humphreys. You only need one of these to be pointless to win that jackpot. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mr. Humphreys. For £1,750. 29. Okay, you said, you said that was the one you had least faith in. You've got two more up your sleeve. Mrs Slocum is next. How do you think she's going to do I in relation to Mr Humphreys? Possibly around the same, maybe a bit higher, perhaps. Right, okay. Let's find out. This is your second answer. This has to be a pointless answer if you are going to win the jackpot. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Mrs. Slocum. For 
41 people said Mrs Slocum, so that is not a pointless answer. Oh dear, oh dear. Mr Lucas, though, this is the one you had the most faith in. Yeah. Mr Lucas. Not that much faith, but a, but little, a little bit, bit more. more. But a little bit more. What would you do with £1,750? Oh, well, my son's getting married in December. Congratulations. Next December, so a little bit there. My daughter's in university, so a few fees there. Is Brian going to get any? Nothing. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck. This has to be a pointless answer for you to win that jackpot. Has to be pointless. None of our 100 people can have said it. Your last answer is Mr. Lucas. We are looking for characters from Are You Being Served? We really have to hope nobody said Mr. Lucas for you to win that jackpot of £1,750. Let's see how many of our 100 people did say Mr. Lucas. Feeling confident? Uh, this is for the jackpot of £1,750. Down it goes. Oh, no! Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all-important pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot of £1,750, which rolls over to the next show. But you have been fantastic contestants, and you do get to take home our pointless trophy. That's probably painful. Absolutely. That was tough. That was, was tough. But you, was. you sort of you seem to know your way around it a bit. Well, the main characters, but then, you know, there was Mr Rumbold, but I thought he'd be up there as well, and yeah. Miss Brahms, but... Yeah. And I couldn't think, I think probably the pointless answer would be the sort Arthur of um, Porter, cleaner yeah. porter yeah. type. Arthur English character. The Arthur English right. character, oh mm. dear. Well, Richard, what, what should they have said? Well, they, they, they should have said the Arthur English character because he was one of the pointless answers. There's four pointless answers, actually. Let's take a look at them. Mr Granger was oh. the, the sort of the, the gents outfitter, the elderly guy with the glasses. Oh, wow. Mr Harmon was that Arthur was English's the, yeah. character. Yeah. He, was yeah. the, he was the caretaker. Mr. Mash was in uh, very briefly for the first three years of Are You Being Served? And the only other pointless answer, Mike Berry was in the last four years or so. He played Mr. Spooner, who also worked in the, in the gents department. So uh, bad luck. You're a fantastic uh, team all the way through. Thank you. Thanks. Really bad luck. Well, unfortunately, we do have to say goodbye to Brian and Jane, but you've been great contestants. Thank you both for playing. You've been fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So nobody's won our jackpot today, so it rolls over again, which means on the next show we will be playing for £2,750. Mm. Join us next time to see if someone can win it on Pointless, but meanwhile it's a goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.